This, this is a glass of nature's nectar. Raw, unpasteurized, A2, A2, right out of a grass-fed cow. That's as fresh as you can get. <laughs> right. I mean, you can't get it any more local farm fresh than this glass of cow milk. There are some people in the homesteading world that will tell you, you can drink this even if you can't drink cow milk from the supermarket, even if you have lactose intolerance. Well, is that true? I'm gonna test that out today. You see, I have a sneaky suspicion that I may be lactose intolerant, I may have some sort of milk allergy, and what happens after I drink this glass of milk may not only decide my fate as far as drinking cow milk, but even whether or not I decide we should own cows in the future. Bottoms up, fancy. Here goes nothing. I am legit terrified to do this. How's it taste? That's that for a milk mustache. <laughs> How's it taste? It's delicious. I love her milk. Gross. Mm. Oh man, milk is so good. <laughs> you oh. haven't had it in months. I haven't had milk in months. This is the first glass of milk I've had. Oh man. Boy, I'm gonna miss that. 9.44 in the morning. I just drank a glass of milk. Let's put the clock beep up in the corner and let's uh, monitor symptoms. All right, let's catch you up. You may be wondering like, why does the guy who owned dairy cows and milk dairy cows every day think he has a dairy intolerance? What's going on here? Let's go back in time. We're gonna go all the way back in time to cute little baby Austin. No mustache, but just as endearing as ever. <laughs> I have always had some funny stomach issues. My grandma would have to rush over to the house with a big bottle of prune juice. Remember the last time you had a bowl of prunes? To help little toddler Aust because he was, uh... It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and wouldn't come out again. Over the years, you know, on and off, I've dealt with some stomach issues, but it got really bad this summer. I was getting so sick and tired of, you know, the... But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. And the, uh, you know... Oh no! Who's it, Percy? Yeah, I was getting really tired of all that. We've dealt with these issues before in our family, so we kind of had a couple of, you know, suspects. We thought it might be sugar, maybe gluten. I even took eggs out for a while. So finally I took milk out of my diet and good day, good day, good day, good day, good day. Nothing good day. but good days. And so I decided to take all dairy out of my diet completely. And that's what I did. Until of course today when I just drank an entire glass of milk. Why did I do that? Well, you see, in the time that I've taken milk out of my diet, I've stumbled across a lot of stories and claims from different homesteaders, farmers, and consumers who are saying that they had problems with dairy and then they tried raw A2A2 milk and those problems went away. Back in October, when I took dairy out of my diet, I never isolated just our milk. You see, I would drink a glass of our milk in the morning, but then I'd have a slice of pizza from the pizzeria down the street. I had never actually tested to see whether or not I could still have dairy if it was just raw milk from our grass-fed A2A2 cows. And that's why today I decided to have a big old glass of raw A2A2 grass-fed milk. We're a half hour into this test. How am I feeling? All right, so how are you feeling? What's the update? All right, it's been a few minutes and there's nothing real immediate. Just a little anxiety. Uh, even that's kind of passed because we're working in the barn. I'm not thinking about like, uh, how do I feel? Yeah, so, so far, I mean, so far nothing. Now, that doesn't really mean anything other than I don't have like a super anaphylactic, anaphylactic response, response which is good. That's response. the bad one, yeah. so that's the worst one, but. This is a disclaimer. We are going to be talking about a lot of health conditions today, but we're not doctors. Go talk to your doctor if you're having some serious health problems. 
Speaking of going and talking to a doctor, that's actually what we did next because the world of dairy intolerance and allergies can be very confusing and we thought it would be good to get a professional to help explain what problems I might be going through and maybe help you figure out if you too are going through some sort of dairy issue at home. So let me introduce you to Dr. Trill. I am Dr. Trill Pollen. When it comes to the world of dairy and stomach aches and trying to figure out what's wrong, she makes up the perfect dream Venn diagram team. <laughs> You see, Dr. Trill actually used to work in the field of dairy. But I worked at a dairy processing facility running the quality systems uh, for several years. She's also a biologist. I'm a molecular biologist by trade. And professionally, she runs a company, Free to Feed. And I am the CEO and co-founder of a company called Free to Feed. We help parents who are navigating food reactivity. And my specialty is specifically looking at the molecular components of milk. And the other reason we love Dr. Trill is because she has a lot of fun making this stuff understandable on Instagram, and you should give her a follow. We have actually worked with her in the past with problems we've experienced. We can't say enough good things about Dr. Trill. As a really good kind of foundation, when we're looking at the components of milk, right, and really the components of, of all milk, no matter what mammal it comes from. We first want to look at the macronutrients that make up that milk. So we have the proteins, the carbohydrates, and the fats. And so what's fascinating when we're talking about intolerances or allergies, most often when we talk about an intolerance, we're talking about a lactose intolerance. And lactose is the carbohydrate that makes up the cow's milk or the mammalian milk, um, so the sugar that makes up that milk. And when we're talking about an allergy, most often we're talking about a reaction, an immune system response to the protein that makes up cow's milk. And it's very important to note that there are hundreds of different types of proteins that make up cow's milk, and you can be allergic to any of them. Oh my um, goodness, you're here to make this more simple. <laughs> Okay, so you're following this. So far we've learned that I could either have a lactose intolerance or I could have some form of milk allergy. Now maybe you're thinking allergy, isn't that like EpiPens and anaphylaxis? So what's really fascinating is that oftentimes, stereotypically, when we think of a food allergy, we think of little Timmy having a peanut, going into anaphylactic shock, can't breathe, needs an EpiPen and goes to the hospital right? Like that's the image that comes to mind. And that is one type of an allergy. That category is called an IgE mediated allergy. I myself, I have anaphylactic IgE mediated allergies. I've got my EpiPens, all that fun stuff. And that is one type of food allergy. But there's an entire other category. And unfortunately, as scientists, um, we lovingly name them non-IgE mediated allergies, which is a huge bucket. This includes celiac, this includes um, FPIs, allergic proctocolitis. And unfortunately, this gets coined incorrectly as an intolerance because in our society, we think of that as being lesser. We think of that being like not as bad. So I just drank a glass of milk and 30 minutes have gone by and nothing intense, nothing life-threatening has happened, which wipes out the possibility that I'm facing a IgE allergy. But that still leaves a lot of questions. Am I lactose intolerant? Do I have a non-IgE allergy to dairy? And will raw A2A2 cow's milk help me? So lactose is a sugar molecule that our bodies can't digest until the lactase enzyme breaks it apart into galactose. No. Galactose? Galactose. Battlestar Galactose? That's the coolest sounding sugar I've ever heard of. Sorry, I interrupted your so good So it breaks flow. it into galactose and glucose which our bodies can digest without any issues. Now, if you're not making the lactase enzyme in your small intestine, and the lactose is just going through you, it's going to meet your large intestine, and everything in there is just like, nope, we can't handle this, get it out. <laughs> Crap. 
cramping, bloating, gas, diarrhea. That's lactose intolerance when your body's not producing enough lactase to break apart that lactose. I know some of you are watching and listening right now and you're yelling at the screen. You have lactose intolerance and you have a simple solution. You just take a lactate pill or you drink lactate products. Yes, these products can help people with lactose intolerance and here's why. So what's happening in the body when you have a true lactose intolerance is that your body is lacking lactase. So then when you take lactase as a supplement, the, its job is to break that down for you. So it's literally saying, okay, well, I don't have enough of it. I'm going to supplement it. The uh, lactase that's, or the enzyme that's added to these products, where do they get that from? So most of it's lab made. Um, there are other ways to derive um, enzymes, mostly either lab made or from um, pork products, um, some from cow products. So essentially deriving the enzyme from other animals and other um, sources. In my previous life, uh, working at a dairy processing facility, we made lactose free products. And the way we did that is we took regular cow's milk and we would add lactose to it and then let it incubate for a certain period of time and test it to make sure that enough of the lactose cleaved. And so it was now no longer lactate, lactose, it was now its two counterparts. And then we would be able to market it as a lactose free. So it's actually a regular old cow's milk product that has this enzyme added to it and then incubated for a certain amount of time. I know personally, a lot of people have problems with dairy who take a lactate pill or drink lactate milk and their problems go away. And so of course I tried it and it did not help me. But then I heard this rumor that raw A2A2 grass-fed milk, well, that can help people with lactose intolerance. Could that be the solution for me? Why would raw milk be any different? People have their theories. Yes, one is that raw milk contains the enzyme lactase that helps you digest the lactose. This one we've seen a lot of homesteader blogs and farms that sell raw milk claim in their articles and their write-ups, there's lactase, the enzyme that you need to digest lactose in the dairy milk. In the actual in milk. In the milk itself, if it's raw milk, and that'll digest it for you. This sounded great. I asked Dr. Trill, some people claim it has lactase in it. Is there mm -hmm. any scientific data that you've been able to find that, that would back that up or refute that? Any, can you shed any light on that? Yeah, so it's a fascinating topic that absolutely needs more research done, um, which is unfortunately the name of the game for the particular like field that I'm in. What we do know about raw milk is we haven't found any research to indicate that raw milk contains lactase, that it's breaking down the lactose prior. No, there is no evidence to suggest that raw milk contains lactase. But the story doesn't stop there, thus the reason so many people claim to be able to drink raw milk when they previously could not drink dairy from the supermarket. In actual like controlled placebo style studies, right? Like double blind placebo studies where they say, um, we're going to give raw milk to a certain set of individuals, we're going to give pasteurized milk to another set of individuals, who are lactose intolerant and see if there's a difference, they see no difference between those two groups. That being said, that research that has been done has also been on really small sample sets. And the research that's been done, they did not pre-test those individuals to see what their microbiome looked like before they started the procedures. So anytime we're talking about the microbiome and the gastrointestinal system, it's so important to note that we have billions with a B strains of bacteria in our gastrointestinal system. But it's not surprising that the research then is all across the board everywhere, where like sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. Why? Same type of thing as it relates to raw milk, because it does contain different bacteria that is um, killed off, if you will, for lack of better terms, in the uh, pasteurization process. And that's the whole goal of the pasteurization process, right? right? Kill off those bugs. So what is fascinating then is that why it would potentially help some and not others. And there has been retroactive studies where they go back and say, okay, with a retroactive study, we can go talk to individuals, many more hundreds, as opposed to like a dozen, 
we can go look at hundreds of individuals and ask them when you consumed raw milk, did it help? And when you do, you see about half, about a split of around half that say like, yeah, actually raw milk really helped me. So when scientists are trying to speculate why that's the case, obviously with those retroactive studies, the first thing to consider is, is that a placebo effect, right? Where like we're hoping we want this to be better. And so our body um, reacts accordingly. Or the other and very likely possibility is that the difference in the bacteria is fermenting and changing the lactate lactose in the actual product. And whether or not it helps you is dependent on whether or not that bacteria strain is the one that you needed in order to break the sugar down. So there's a lot to untangle there and a really amazing science experiment if anybody wants to contact me to chat about. Um, <laughs> we'll help promote it. <laughs> so in the data that Trill has poured over, there is a group of people who claim to find relief from raw milk. Was I one of them? A lot of time has passed. Let's check in. So far, I mean, I'm fine. This is kind of mind blowing. Unless it's the calm before the storm and you're about to get hit. But, <laughs> but so far, this is great. That is such a great phrase to apply to a bathroom <laughs> stop. The calm before the storm. <laughs> And it was the calm before the storm. There were some interesting things happening in the bathroom. I'm not gonna get gross here on YouTube. Let's just say there were mild symptoms. Something I would almost be willing to overlook completely for a really good cheesecake or a cookie. And so that's what we decided would be the next proper test in this scientific experiment. Kay baked some cookies. And not just any cookies, some amazing shortbread cookies. If you've ever made them, you know they're pretty much like 50% butter. Farm fresh, raw butter from our own cows. Beautiful, amazing, and for my belly, pure poison. I ate one shortbread cookie and I hadn't had a homemade cookie in a long time. It wasn't long, the cookie monster in me came out. And before you know it, I had eaten five shortbread cookies, which is a lot of butter. A couple hours passed and I started to feel pretty bad. At one point, it was like I had the flu. Really bad bathroom stuff, but on top of that, aches, exhaustion. All right, time for an update. Oh man, Am I feel. I in this? Do you want to be in this? Of course. Anytime. You wheel yourself your, over. Your intestinal issues. <sighs> oh man. <laughs> Drank the milk and had. It was on Thursday. And like today's Sunday. Yeah, and had like negative effects. I had some stomach issues, some bathroom issues, uh, but it wasn't some, like, but we were hoping for like, I was hoping for just something explosive. Or nothing. <laughs> this, I had a lot of shortbread cookies and I am regretting that now. You did eat a lot of my cookies. My belly hurts. I feel like, I feel gross right now. This is a absolute A2, A2. We were not A2. expecting this and butter's actually a lot lower in lactose than the glass of milk. And there was a little clue into what my personal problem may be. Butter has much less lactose than milk does. And in my previous tests with lactate pills and lactate products, I have found no relief. So according to what Dr. Trill said, it would seem that I do not have lactose intolerance. Instead, I may be suffering from something else a non-IgE allergy. If you've tried both mechanisms, if you've done both the supplementation and you've tried the products that are marketed as lactose-free and they are not helpful, it's not significantly alleviating your symptoms, you are most likely not lactose intolerant. What symptoms is someone gonna see if they're dealing with some sort of uh, non-IgE allergy with dairy? Yeah, so because it's such a large bucket of several pathways, there's many different types of symptoms that we can see. So going from kind of the top to bottom, and we can see chronic congestion, we can see reflux issues, silent reflux, vomiting response, stomach trouble, that gas response, 
mucousy stool, bloody stool, diarrhea, constipation, and then the secondary problems from that, like the discomfort, the sleep disturbances, the failure to thrive, weight gain problems, things of that accord, or even weight loss problems, putting on more weight than what you uh, typically would. There's a lot there. And unfortunately, again, talking those Venn diagrams, you may have noticed that a lot of those symptoms I just mentioned are symptoms that are the same as lactose intolerance. Asking for a friend here. Any way to figure out, like, um, do I have a non-IgE allergy versus uh, lactose intolerance? The main way to determine whether or not is that, like, law of, like, ruling out, right? Which you've already done, which is um, if I am consuming a product that has already had the lactose broken down for me and it doesn't alleviate my symptoms, I'm not likely to be lactose intolerant. I'm more likely to have a non-IgE mediated food allergy. I've ruled out that um, lactose isn't my problem because I consume um, those things that don't have lactose or I've taken a lactase supplement. And I've ruled out IgE mediated allergies because either those aren't my symptoms or I've done a test and it's not come back positive. And unfortunately, non-IgE mediated allergic responses do not have an effective test. Now, you, you mentioned early on, Trill, a lot of these non-IgE allergies people outgrow. What percentage, <laughs> how rare is someone that is not lactose intolerant, but ha is suffering from like a non-IgE allergy at my age? I'm going to answer the question that I can't answer. And then I'm going to do my, my science thing and say, we need more research. Um, unfortunately, these specific types of food allergic responses, most of them didn't get diagnostic codes until 2017. So that means that the data for adults, for adult onset, non-IgE mediated food allergies is awful. Am I incredibly a rare person to be talking to who doesn't think they're lactose intolerant but has these issues? How often are you bumping into this? Yeah. So what's really fascinating is that um, since the diagnostic criteria officially came out around 2016 and 17, the actual diagnosis for infants has increased so dramatically that we're no longer, they're no longer considered rare. But it's also alongside it, seeing this massive increase in the adults that are getting those diagnoses. And so I think we'll continue to see that uptick and we'll see a dramatic shift in um, how many people are actually lactose intolerant and how many have non-IG mediated food allergies. So we've covered in depth raw milk, whether or not that could help possibly with lactose intolerance and with non-IgE mediated allergies but we haven't yet dove into the topic of A2A2 milk. Back when we bought our first family milk cow, we made sure she was an A2A2 milk cow. What is an A2A2 milk cow produce? What is A2A2 milk? And could it possibly help you or myself with our milk-related tummy issues? I asked Dr. Trill about this. Nowadays, you hear a lot about A2A2 milk. Uh, can you shed any light on who, what that is, why that would help somebody and not another trail, anything on what A2A2 milk is and any information, any light you can shed on that. So what's really fascinating about A2A2 milk is that it is a modification of one of the highly allergenic proteins that makes up cow's milk protein. And so what I mentioned before, though, if we think back, I also mentioned that there are hundreds of proteins that make up cow's milk. And so if you are specifically allergic to the protein that has been adjusted in A2 milk, you will no longer have an allergic response to that particular type of milk, which is great and fabulous. However, a vast majority of the population don't necessarily react to A2. Um, I want to say the last uh, data that I looked at was around a quarter to a third of individuals who have cow's milk protein allergic responses will react to that specific protein. And so wonderful, that's a big chunk of the population now that can consume cow's milk. But that also means that if you're reactive to any of the other of the plethora of proteins, it's not going to be helpful for you. Huge thanks to Dr. Trail. She answered so many questions. And as I've already said, Dr. Trill is an incredible resource. We'll have links below to all her different social media and her website. And I'm guessing a lot of you watching this video, if you're still watching, she's probably answered some of your questions. Comment below, have you dealt with these problems and what have you learned in today's video? Share it with friends who you know deal with this problem. 
If you're really interested in diving in deep, you can watch the whole entire interview I did with Dr. Trill. That's in the Pioneer Library. I'll have a link below to it and a link below to become a pioneer if you want to dive into the Pioneer Library and enjoy everything we have in there for you. Now, back to me. How am I feeling? What's going on? And how's this going to affect our cow ownership? There are so many more questions. All right. Uh, I feel awful right now. And this is really funny because I feel like crap. But I'm super happy because this is clarity. If you've ever dealt with like uh, food intolerance, food sensitivity, food allergies, the not knowing is so frustrating. Today, this butter test, like I feel like I have the flu. I, I'm like gonna go back and lay down again. A hundred percent I can say it does not matter for me. A2, A2 milk, grass fed, raw doesn't matter i cannot consume it so stop people who are saying on the internet just don't drink the right milk you got to drink living milk and you got to have stuff it might help some people but you got to stop spreading that lie that it doesn't matter what kind of milk i drink and i know from what we found from our audience from asking our audience there's a lot of people out there we conducted a poll right here on YouTube of our very audience, and we found of all the people in our audience who look to raw and A2A2 milk to try to help their dairy issues, 20% found zero help. Which brings us to the conclusion of this video. Does raw milk actually help? Does A2A2 actually help? Well, for a lot of people, it seems like it does. More people are helped switching to raw A2A2 than aren't, but there is a group of us out there who are seriously cannot drink this stuff. And it breaks my heart a little bit. We love our dairy cows and I don't know yet what we're gonna decide about that, that we gotta figure stuff out, but I feel awful. So I think I'm gonna stop recording. I've got enough conclusive data here and I'm gonna just go and I'm gonna go watch some shows and Maybe sleep a little, I'm tired. I, uh, yeah. Ugh. Okay, wait. I almost hate to even say this, I hate to admit it on the internet, but there is one more last hope that I may be able to have milk. And yes, the animal that I have been the hardest on, that I have picked on the most, I've said the worst things about in all my homesteading, could they be the key to me still being able to enjoy milk? Find out in the next video in this series. Boy, if I can have goat's milk, the universe has a cruel, cruel sense of humor.